All right. Good afternoon, everybody. This is Adam Baker at the National Weather Service, and uh, we'll get going. I've got 402, and we've got a lot in attendance here. A lot of really tight schedules, so we'll make this as efficient as possible. All right, so we have upgraded the previous watch area into different zones of a winter storm warning. You know, winter weather advisory, both are upgrades. This is due to a strong Arctic cold front that's going to be pushing through the area uh, early tomorrow morning and skirting out pretty quickly by midday. Uh, the main threats still are the same, accumulating snow to portions of north and west central Georgia and some areas of black ice that could develop quickly across both north and, and central Georgia. However, the big uncertainties exist even this close to the event. There's still a lot of question as to how far south the uh, extent of accumulating snow and the effect on the ground temperatures could result. And then all, uh, also how much melting and drying could occur in the afternoon because we're looking at some rapid clearing and some increase in the northwest winds. The possible impacts could linger into Wednesday, particularly in the farther north portions of the area that stay colder throughout the afternoon and the gusty winds of 20 to 30 miles per hour with cold temps are going to have some pretty dangerous wind chills for Wednesday morning. Um, some single digits could be in the mountains with pretty much low teens elsewhere. So to break it down for you here, the winter storm warning has been issued mainly from Rome eastward, including the higher elevations of North Georgia. The winter weather advisory includes the rest of the previous winter storm watch area that extends farther south along and north of the I-85 corridor. Anywhere within the winter storm warning is looking at one to three inches of snow with locally higher amounts in the higher elevations. Anywhere in the winter weather advisory is going to be mainly a trace to perhaps one and a half inch of snow. Now, we will go through a couple different scenarios where some parts of the advisory area could receive slightly higher amounts and we'll, we'll pin, pick, pick apart a few of those different scenarios. However, the main impacts with this, depending on what does dry out, if there's any lingering moisture, even if you just get some showers uh, with a brief snow transition and, and not much as far as accumulations go, there is still that threat of patches of black ice in the overnight because it's some extremely cold air that's going to be pushing in behind this. So here's the amounts on the right. Again, two to three in the far north. And then there's that zone that goes from mainly a half inch to one and a half inches within the advisory. And I should mention too that this advisory is in effect. It's a slightly different time period than the watch. It starts at 3 a.m. now and it lasts until 7 p.m. The 7 p.m. mark doesn't mean that that's how long the snow lasts. That just means that that carries over some of those lingering impacts if there's any uh, frozen ice or lingering snow in the north. But the actual snow should taper off quickly by midday. Here's one of what we would call our best case solutions. Um, anywhere in the blue is the transition from the green rain to the blue snow. You can see that there's not really any mixture of any other sleet or freezing rain with this. It's a very quick transition. Um, one thing to point out here, as you look towards the southern extent of where it starts to taper off, it really starts to end and taper off to get light right around the metro area. It approaches the northwest and still gets that into some of the potentially moderate snow, but then Farther south, closer to uh, north of LaGrange, Peachtree City, it really thins out pretty quickly. So this, this uh, loop of simulated radar actually ends around 12 p.m., so just to give you a time frame with that. Now, going on to a possible worst-case solution, you can see that that zone that I was talking about, mainly west-central Georgia into the metro, does end up having a significantly heavier band Again, it's quick, but it's heavier, and it does push farther south. Um, so it's something that we're monitoring with every model run that we get. There's tons of models that we're looking at, and we're trying to, to look at the best ones that we know in this type of situation. So I know those loops were a little bit fast, but to just break it down into those the key times that we're talking about here, the best versus the worst. 
that same zone, here's what we're trying to split hairs on. So there's that situation here on the right could still develop. If that does actually uh, pan out, then there could be an upgrade to a warning. There could be a, a more Southern extent to the advisory, or we could just hold still with what we have. But we will make updates as soon as we see more certainty with this. Okay, so the timing of below freezing temps have slightly changed on the left from yesterday. They're a little bit quicker to move into North Georgia. So this is before 7 a.m. anywhere along and north of this zone should be hitting the freezing mark. So that's where even if you, you're going to have the snow transition possibly one to two hours before these times, but the time that you'd actually reach, have the ground get to, to freezing is, is what we're depicting here. The 10 a.m. line is a little bit farther south, so it's a little bit quicker approaching that northwest metro area by 10. Again, the snow transition could be an hour or two earlier than this, so metro Atlanta could see some snow start to transition as early as, as 8 or 9 a.m. It does slow down though. We actually just kind of hold steady here from pretty much 10 a.m. to about 4 or 5 p.m. with little progression of that uh, below 32 line. And then once we get a better surge as the, the sun starts to decrease its angle and we start to cool off in conjunction with that colder air mass, it really starts to push farther south and east quickly. So by 8 p.m., a large chunk of central Georgia is now below freezing and then the rest of the area uh, all sub-freezing by 11 p.m. So a little bit earlier start to approaching the middle part of the area, but then lags and stays steady. So something else that we're splitting here is on with the 30 to 33 degree mark for surface temperatures. Overnight lows, this is as low as you're expected to get for the overnight. Many areas in the upper teens to low 20s, and the mountain should actually be even approaching the, the low teens. Okay, so we looked at temperature timing. So let's look at the rain snow transition timing here. So this is little snippets of different times, 7 a.m. The main, uh, if there's a mix of rain and snow, that's the pink. If it's all snow transition, that's the blue, and then green is rain. So we see that pink transition mark start to impinge along that I-85 corridor by 10 a.m. and then by 1 p.m. you can see there's little progression at all to that zone. But the good news is, is that by 1 p.m. things should quickly be starting to dry out and uh, diminish across the area. So we're still watching this area here, okay? Uh, if there's any possible surge of slightly higher snow accumulations, it, it may be a situation to where, you know, we have to see the whites of its eye before we really know how much is going to be um, a, a more moderate snow pushing that far south, but we're gonna we're gonna send out updates as soon as we think that something like that could happen. Right now, we're holding back on it, but we are starting to see some of that in a few of the models. So, uh, separate from the surface temperatures, this is the overall windows of the snow timing. So this would include the initial onset transition from rain. Keep in mind these uh, time windows is the best guess. It could vary slightly by an hour or two. So mainly the far northwest part of Georgia, 3 a.m. to 9 a.m. And then as we transition farther south, um, the corridor north of Canton and just south of Rome up to the far northeast mountains, 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. We start to get close to the uh, northwest metro between 9 a.m. persisting possibly until noon. And then the very southern edge of that could be in the window from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. So all this will be in your slides. Uh, we try to make sure that everybody has different worries for every county out there. So we're trying to do our best to give you our best uh, guess on the timing for this. So again, the other thing that brings us uncertainty is how much. Okay, so first of all, what falls, how much of it? and then how much can actually melt or dry in the afternoon. The sky cover on the left is what we've got by 3 p.m. tomorrow. So you can see anywhere that is starting to get in the blues, you're gonna be seeing the sun poking through and primarily the sun. 
Um, all the whites are going to be the partly cloudy, but this is mostly clear. So by 3 p.m., pretty much starting after about 1 p.m., it's going to be rapid clearing. So that means that the sun is going to start to impact things. Now, if it's shaded or if it's under an overpass, um, then, of course, that's going to be a lot harder for the sun to have an impact. The other thing that's going to have an impact with a possible drying or melting would be the enhanced northwest winds. So these are our max winds that we're looking at for the afternoon, gusting upwards of 20 to 25 miles per hour. So that could help things out. I mean, it will feel really cold out, but as far as what the surfaces react to, uh, the afternoon could have a significant period to where a lot of what could fall ends up melting and drying out. So here's at the tail end of this, the impact of this system here. We're looking at uh, early Wednesday. Wednesday morning, here's, here's what the skin temperature or the wind chill is going to feel like. Pretty much all of the area in the low to mid-teens and a lot of the mountains in the far northeast, uh, some could actually be approaching zero. So this could very well warrant a, uh, uh, a wind chill advisory. Anything that's five degrees or lower for wind chills would be advisory criteria. So that could be another product that comes out with other updates. The afternoon highs for Wednesday on the right are here. Now that could be delayed if there's still anything on the ground. Primarily we're thinking, you know, if there's anything heavier that ends up in parts of the west or parts of the far north, um, it, it could delay some of this warming into the day. But these are the temps that we expect by early to mid-afternoon. So most all areas do go above freezing. If there's a key time for reaching above freezing, it looks like most areas in the warning and, well, I would say most areas in the current advisory area would get above freezing after 12 p.m. The warning area could have some of those higher elevations that still stay close to freezing. Um, any uh, change to this, we're going to update too, but that's our current thinking right now. All right, so in summary, again, we did upgrade to winter storm warning and, and winter weather advisories. The big thing that we're looking at here, so if there's any change that we make this evening, or uh, in the overnight, it's going to be focusing on if that southern extent does look a little bit more likely. Um, if that's the case, there could be changes to our current products. So just keep that in mind. Um, at this point, um, I think all our slides and this recording, uh, the slides should be up now. And this recording will be posted probably within the next hour. And so you can share that with anybody that was unable to get onto this webinar. That other question, he said he was just going to call.